So let's talk about how we create Compute Engine instance backups using Google Cloud Backup and DR. First up, we've deployed our Google Cloud Backup and DR service. We've got a management console, and we've got a backup and recovery appliance, and we've got a whole bunch of Compute Engine instances for which we need to create backups. What do we do? The Backup and DR service uses an IAM service account attached to our Backup and Recovery appliance to perform the backups using Compute Engine APIs. It will also auto-create any OnVault pools it needs. So all you need to do on the Compute Engine side is make sure that the auto-created service account has been added to all relevant projects with the correct IAM roles. We also need to build some backup plans, and once we've done this, we can begin the process of creating backups. Backup creation is a fairly simple process. First, a Compute Engine API call is sent, which requests that a snapshot be made of the persistent disks of protected Compute Engine instances. We can either back up specific persistent disks, or we can back them all up. And that backup data is stored in the region that we set in our backup plan. This could be multi-region, or it could be single region, or it could even be multiple regions if we create multiple snapshot policies that each specify a different region. Also be aware that from release 11.04, we support archive type as well as standard type for persistent disk snapshots. Once the snapshot is complete, the metadata for that snapshot is stored both by the backup appliance locally and also in a special auto-created OnVault pool as part of our metadata backup. Incremental snapshots are then run on demand or by backup plan in that if you've requested one backup every 24 hours, then every 24 hours an additional backup will be created. And these backups are all incremental. The other part of creation of backups is expiration of backups. What happens is that if you've set a seven day retention period, then clearly if we have a snapshot that's more than seven days old, it's time to expire it. And that gets removed from the system automatically as well as the metadata that describes it. Now that metadata is important because what it allows us to do is to make the snapshots themselves portable. So if our production appliance has created a backup and stored the metadata in an OnVault pool, we can share that metadata with a separate appliance such that our DR appliance could use it to create or recover new Compute Engine instances in the DR location. So that makes our snapshots truly portable through the process of metadata importation. In terms of recovery, there are two ways we can use our backups. We can mount them. What this means is we use Compute Engine APIs to turn the backups of our Compute Engine instance snapshots into persistent disk volumes that we can either present to the source Compute Engine instance or a target Compute Engine instance, or an entirely new Compute Engine instance. So what's being shown on the right could either be a existing Compute Engine instance or the creation of an entirely new one. The information to create the Compute Engine instance is part of our metadata backup. So things like what service account should be attached, what scope was that service account running on, what metadata tags exist, such as labels. By the way, those new Compute Engine instances can be created in any region, any zone, and any project, provided the service account being used by the backup and recovery appliance has been added to the target project. Obviously, mount is great, but what's also important is the ability to restore the source instance's disks. If it has multiple disks, we can restore a specific disk, or we can restore them all. So, how do we set this up? Obviously, we need to activate the backup and DR service, validate that our auto-generated service account has the correct roles, then add that service account to any additional projects as needed, create our backup plan templates for Compute Engine instance backups, and now we're ready to begin the onboarding. And once we've done our onboarding and backups are created on schedule, we can, if necessary, run recovery tasks such as mount and restore. All right, how do we do all this? That's all in future videos in this playlist.